Good. What are we? Morning or afternoon? Good afternoon, guys. Day one, week 12. That's the last official school week of the year, guys. Well, you know all of the deadline, and today I will not be too, too long because I know you are a batch of busy bees. Uh, June 16, deadline, assignment, I know you know that. June 16, 17, 18 will be officialized in the next day or so as far as book return, and you know your TA will all let you know about it. I'll date the teacher to get our marking is the 22nd at 9 a.m. You know all of that, tra -la -la. So guys, this week, this weekend, all the way till next week, there's nine days. So it is time to get it done, guys. But with my class, I'm pretty happy overall with the, the work that you guys have done. I'm pretty pumped, actually. Learning Guy 12, guys, is the last bad boy of the year, the last unit that will bring you to social 10-2 in the fall. That learning guide 12, I've prepared the assignment yesterday, as you've seen, and there's already a couple of people that have done, that are done with it. And I'm so very happy, and it's really easy. That learning guide 12 talk about sustainable prosperity or sustainable development for today and the future. And I know you know what is sustainable. That can be kept on an ongoing basis. If you take as an example hydroelectricity, power that is made from river and water dam, it is a renewable energy source. Water is still falling in the river, the rain is still falling, it's renewable. If you take of non-sustainable, it would be fossil fuel as an example. Once you suck out from the ground all of that fossil fuel, there's no more after unless there's another meteorite that hit the dinosaur of today and for 75 million years afterward cooking on the ground, oil will be gone. Sustainable, not sustainable. That Learning Guide 12, guys, goes on Chapter 12 from only page 272 to page 286. And it's really easy, that last assignment of the semester. If I look at the assignment now, because I have it right here with me, the first question of the assignment asks you to focus. My God, the sun is coming, the sun is going. We'll get a good view. Here we go. Ask you number one to look between page 272 to 277 in that book. And the first question is asking, let me just try to get an angle guy with a bit brighter. There we go. He's asking you, according to figure 12 11 on page 277, what part of our earth? is warming up the most quickly. To find the answer to that first question of the assignment, you are basically going to page 277 and you are checking figure 12-11. That's a map of the world, the one at the bottom here. If you look, guys, at the legend on the top part, this is where the Earth is warming up the faster as well as some part in the southern hemisphere. So the question is asking you here, what part of the Earth is warming up the fastest? So when you look at that map and you read it, why is all of the carbon dioxide so damaging to our planet? This map shows how the world temperature was warmer than normal for the year 2003. I know that's an old book. This global warming is blamed on carbon dioxide and pollutant in the air from the burning fossil fuel by industries and car. As the planet continues to warm up, what will happen to the water in the world, blah, 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 blah. So the answer to that one, guys, what part of the Earth is war is is warming up the fastest, you can write as an answer the northern hemisphere, or you can write the northern part of Russia, the northern part of Greenland, the northern part of Canada and the United States, because Alaska is into the, you know, in the United States. And if you look south in the southern hemisphere, you look at Antarctica. If you look at the southern point of South America in Chile and Argentina in South America, and you look at the dark red at the bottom, that would be Elephant Island 
in Antarctica and the southern tip of Antarctica. So the answer, as I said, northern hemisphere. Southern hemisphere would be just fine. Or you can write southern hemisphere, Antarctica, and you can write Canada, United States, and then you can write Russia, as you can see in the far north. But if you look at central in Western Europe, and you look at France, Spain, and Italy, and Algeria in Northern Africa, they are also in the red. So that question is basically very, very easy to answer. The second question asks you to look at figure 12-8, and 12-8 is on page 277. And it asks you to list four countries with a population density of more than 125 people per square kilometer. We call that highly dense populated. So when you look at that map of page 24276 12-8 that's the first that's the first one and you look at the legend if you look at a country like Canada we are basically very lightly populated by square kilometer except in a couple of big cities in Vancouver Toronto and Montreal we are basically between 1 and 4 or so the United States and California is very highly populated. It can be one of the answer. United States. If you look now in South America and you look at the east coast of South America, you can very easily write Brazil. If you now look at Asia, look at India, the whole darn thing is red. If you look at China, if you look at the Philippines, if you look at Indonesia, all Japan, all of these countries have more than 125 people per square kilometer because they live in height. And if you look pretty much all the countries in Europe, some countries on the African continent, but if you look at Australia, this is basically only the big cities, only four countries, and there's over a hundred out there to pick two question of the assignment is asking you now to look at figure 12-13. This is a unit on map, guys. On page 278, the one in the bottom. question is asking you, use figure 12-13 on page 278 to identify which area of the earth have been almost fully transformed by human and to only name three countries. So when you look at that map, figure 12-13, and you look at the legend in green, almost pristine, pristine, that means has not been touched, basically. Look at Northern Canada. There's wood there and Canadian shield, and there's a few people living there, but it's basically pristine. Then in blue, you have par partially transformed by man. And then in red, you have almost fully transformed by human. So basically, we're asking you in that question, very easy, to only name three countries where human activities have basically entirely transformed the land. When you look at that map, look at Asia, look at India. That's a pretty good example. You can write India. Look at the United States. The United States, pretty much all of the land, except for the Rocky Mountain to the west, has been affected by human. That can be one of your answers as well, the US. Canada, if you look at it, I would not even touch it. There's not enough. Look at Brazil on the east coast of South America. You can write Brazil quite easily. You can also write, look at Europe. You can write Ireland. United Kingdom, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany, Italy, Greece, blah, 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 blah. And you can write Japan as well. So only three countries. As you can see, that assignment is a brain dead easy because the way those that are behind will be able to catch up with something easy at the end. Question number four now ask you to look between page 279 and 281. It's talking about how do we sustain our planet for today and for generations to come. Question number four of sustainable development. This one is easy, guys. This one you're gonna look at page 279 in the section disaster strike. And if you look 
at uh, on the third paragraph of page 279 the last one that begin with this is the same dilemma when you read that guys this is the same dilemma facing the people of the world how can we use our resource without all of our resource we need to use resource today in such way that they are need to use resource today in such a way that they are still available we're talking about the resource let's say like the tree if you cut one tree in Canada you put two new one and in 15 years from now you have another forest it was still available for our grandchildren and their grandchildren that's what sustainable development is using a resource without using them up totally that's the answer if I look now guys at question number five of the assignment who's asking to list four different attitudes towards resource and that you are looking at figure 12-15 this is the big one right here guys 12-15 and if you look at the top here this is where it goes you can write stuff horizontally at that category the first one on top and look at the title on top as well so when I look at it list four different attitudes and if you look at it guys it says different attitude towards resource attitude towards the environment attitude. Uh, let me just see guys about the resource have is another attitude sustain our resource is the third attitude and preserve our resource so those are the four answer in orange at the top because the title is different attitude towards the resource and if you go from top to bottom you will say environment action example of action thought about the future but for the answer for that question five the four attitude are use what we want and not caring manage what we have this is basically be careful sustain our resort that means to be smart so they last and preserve our resort for the future those are the four answers question number six now guys ask you to look now their general question there's only question six and question seven and eight now question six six ask you what are four advantages of benefit of sustainable development to find that answer you will go to page 282 for number six you're going to look at figure 12 19 the tree at the bottom that big tree and it says the benefit of sustainable uh, you will have sustainable resource save less waste protect okay so what are four benefit of sustainable development well you say you can say the resource will be safe there will be less waste the environment will be protected so you have one two three and you can use as a fourth any of the one in the three leaves let's say I would write for myself uh, resource save uh, I can write recycling a resource or landfill space save or reusing goods so any of the one in a green or good answer and the three of the four into resource save less waste environmental protected can count as well the only one that I would not accept is the title at the bottom of the tree trunk sustainable development so for that question number six guys very easy the big tree on page 282 figure 12-19 everything into the tree brown and green can be good except the title at the bottom of the trunk <sighs> if I now look at question one day to find that answer you're going to look at page 283 in that little yellow rectangle at the bottom right of the page name fact file see what you said the answer is right there on average Canadian use 390 liters of water a day per person that's your answer 390 liters a day twice as much as the average person in Europe 
And the last question is a brain damage easy one. What does the three R mean into the three R? To find that answer, you're gonna look at page 284 and what can you do? Well, you're gonna see practice the R. Reduce, reuse, recycle. You have been brainwashed about that since you're five years old. If any of you do not have that last question right on the three R, I'm going to beat you with a flower in September when we see each other again because I'm not legally allowed to beat you. You know that. So, guys, this is a very easy assignment. And as I just mentioned, the reason why I put that together, guys, is to make sure that those that have done their job all semester have an easy one to finish to maximize their mark. And for those that are a bit or a lot behind, give them an easy assignment at the end just so they can catch up faster. So now for the last five, six, seven minutes, because as I said, I'm not going to go too, too long today because I know you guys are working on all of your course right now to close everything. If I look at that chapter 12 now, and I look at page 272, I'm just going to start very slowly to summarize it. In the introduction, guys, it says that what do map have to do with sustainable development? Basically, we can have a bird view real fast by looking at an image to get quick information. So to not to be in a specific, but to give you an overall sense of what's happening on the planet according to A, B, C, D, E. So this information can be used to show human impact on our planets. In the next section, we will learn how geographers, that are the people that are practicing the science of geography, draw map differently depending on the kind of information they want to show. Map, guys, as you know, most of the standard map in the world today are distorted. Some countries are showed bigger than what they really are. You remember we did as well the meridian, the parallel, the equator, the longitude, the latitude. You know, on a map, England is always in the middle of it with zero time zone. Greenwich in London. Why? Because when cartographer began to make a lot of map, the main imperialistic empire in the world was England. So England, to strengthen their control around the world, as map maker to always put England in the middle of a map to show that they were the center of the world. It is the real answer. The sun, the sun never set on the British empires. That's what they used to say. So if you take Canada, and the city of Edmonton, we are minus seven hour time zone in the mountain from Greenwich, that is basically London South. And if you are, let's say, in Paris, you are plus one hour from Greenwich. So if it's noon in Greenwich, England, it's 1 p.m. in Paris. It's 2 p.m. in Warsaw. It is uh, is cat uh, she said with it is five a.m. in Edmonton. When it's seven a.m. in Edmonton, it is two p.m. in London. See right now, guys, it's twelve thirty. It is seven thirty London time. So when you look at this map guide, there's many type of maps. On page two seven, cut the surface of a map to flatten it, depending on how this is done. Different map, oh, my connection, guys, or map projection are produced. Each map is distorted in some way. Sometimes distances are not accurate, while other time direction are distorted. The map lie flat, they lie. Geographer choose the map projection that best meets their need. 
there are two main type of projection map. The first one is equal area projection. And an equal area projection map show the area of any land surface in correct size proportion to each other. So that means, uh, if you look, guys, uh, at figure 12-13, this is an example of an equal area projection. So you see countries of basically the size they're super to be as well however the shape of the land masses is distorted equal area projection are useful when people want to compare area to the world fairly and if I look now at Figure 12-13, the person that first used that equal area projection was a cartographer named G.B. Good. And if you look at figure 12-14, now the next one, it is Max Eckert, was a German cartographer who designed the Eckert for projection. This is the title of a map like that has. This projection is often used for world map like we would have in a classroom because it showed the true area of place in relation with each other. It is often used to compare different area of the world fairly. So if you look at that type of map, it is not like the equal area projection but it will show a fair size of place versus other place so if you look let's say at uh, look at the first map 12-13 and look at the country of New Zealand or even look at that is on the southeast of Australia the first map you see New Zealand smaller then the second map, 12-14, this is the difference in this kind of mapping. If you look at Brazil now, in the second map, it looks longer from north to south because it really is. So, this is just a few examples of type of map. Now, I'm just going to finish with page 274 today. The third type of map is figure 12-5. It's a conformal projection this is distorted that means it doesn't show the real size of a country the farther a land mass is away oh I'm just waiting for my connection guys okay the farther a land mass is away from the equator the larger it is shown on that type so the equator you know is latitude zero so if you look at a country like, I don't know, take uh, Alaska or take Greenland, because on that type of map, it is the farthest from the equator. And look at Antarctica to the south. It show it bigger than it really is. So Antarctica is a huge land mass, but because it's far from the equator, of course, the South Pole is right there, it shows the land mass a bit bigger than it really is. So and now if you look at the reading, that map is been created by a man named Mer Mercator. It is the most common type of map today, the Mercator map. Designed this conformal projection in the year 1569. That's basically 500 years old, that kind of map, for navigation to help the sailors to go around the world because, you know, boat were the plane of the time. It is still used for marine navigation. Note, the straight line of longitude, they do not go like that, like they're supposed to be zero and go like that, like an apple section, not like an orange section. They always go straight and the latitude always goes straight east-west. The line of latitude cross the line of longitude at right angle. That means at 90 degree angle. It does not go like that, let's say, the longitude and crossing the latitude that way. So this are square. So this is the Mercator map. So guys,
before I go here, look at that. The sun is coming. It was really rainy this weekend, but it's good for Mother Nature. Now I've got a couple of baby magpie in one of my trees in the back. I love them, if you know what I mean. They will grow and fly out of here so I can get that darkness out of the official date for book return coming from the school admin really soon. That's been discussed with teacher already. You know that we are teaching nonstop until Friday the 26th of June. Even if you give your last assignment by the 16th, I'm still online the entire rest of next week and the following week to teach. This is what was asked of us and I'm more than happy to do so, just without assignment. So what I'm going to do with you guys, after the 16th, I'm going to begin very slowly prepping you for the 10-2. I will basically have some class on the Thursday and Friday of the second last week, next week, and in the last week, starting to introduce you the great, hopefully normal life in September, but we're getting there. New Zealand right now is in, and in the country of Vietnam, their soccer match right now with full normal crowd. And don't forget 11 weeks of schooling. So guys, finger side, just waiting for my line. So guys, go hard this week. Finish your assignment. For any of you are told you have to redo Canadian Study 25 because you have not initiated before and after online learning. That would be shameful. But for all of your math, your English doesn't matter. That need to get done because if you are asked to retake a course, that will put you behind in your personal progression. Puma, and you know, guys, you have been real good in the last. 11 weeks and one day now doing your work. I only have a couple of person and I'm a bit nervous. So keep going strong. If you do that, all of you will be successful and, and we can have a heck of a group hug in September. You know what I mean? When we're back together. I will be back tomorrow at 12.15. Enjoy that very easy assignment. And upon that, a very good day, guys. I miss you. Bye-bye.